Okay, our first speaker is, uh, well, let's just read this. Defying deference is the, uh, is the concept of her speech. Bly Faust is a partner and co-founder of Rockland Faust Productions, the Oscar-winning producers of Spotlight. She has been named one of Variety's 10 producers to watch. She's a member of Producers Guild of America and board member of the Center for Investigative Reporting in Sunny Hills. So please, put your hands together and welcome Ms. Bly Faust. <laughs> I'll take an intro like that any day. Wow. Well, it's great to be here, and thank you all for uh, inviting me to be a part of this really extraordinary and eclectic group. Um, so as I started to think uh, tonight about what I might say that would sort of encapsulate a global theme or element that sort of that transcended my very insular world of filmmaking, um, I kept coming back to one word um, and concept, and that is the idea of deference. Um, so let's discuss its idea in both my life and um, a great deal of others. So we can start with the definition of the actual word. Noun. One, a respectful submission or yielding to the judgment, opinion, will of another. Two, a respectful or courteous regard. Now, I was raised to be a polite, courteous young woman, and um, well, I don't think the word deference actually you know, raised its head um, in direct conversations with those holding some sort of advisory capacity in my life. Um, it was something that I had definitely internalized, whether rightfully or wrongfully. Um, and so by the age of 25, based on a series of major, de um, uh, a series of major decisions that I had deferred to the advice of others, you know, I found myself working as a lawyer at a large, uh, well-known law firm in Los Angeles, and I was utterly miserable. And I literally blurted out to my parents one night through this, you know, massive haze of tears, how did I get here? So nothing like deferring your way to the top, right? <laughs> the good news for me is I wasn't alone. The bad news is, is that I wasn't alone. Um, and it wouldn't really be until I'd had the spotlight experience under my belt for me to fully appreciate this. Um, and as I only know now, spotlight is truly the ultimate study of the concept of deference and its devastating impact across countless lives. So let's go back to where it all began. Sorry, I thought I might have a podium to cheat, but apparently not. Um, <laughs> So after far too many calls like the one you know, just described, I finally decided that I'm going to take matters into my own hands for the first time in my life um, and stop looking to others to tell me like, how I should spend my time on this earth. And I decide that I'm going to become a producer. Just don't ask me what the hell that means. So I eventually partnered up with my still current partner, Nicole Rockland, and um, between the two of us, we have exactly six months of official industry experience between the two of us from um, her stint as an assistant at a production company, not exactly insiders us. So we solicit some advice. Um, people who knew the business um, told us that we should do high concept commercial fare, and so we just readily complied. Um, we you know, stumbled around chasing the same stuff that everybody else was chasing and managed to set up a few things here and there at studios, some commercial um, you know, comedies and some thrillers, but it really felt like a lot of spinning of wheels um, and without much direction or real satisfaction. But then comes along author David Misner. And David Misner has absolutely no Hollywood experience, but he tips us off to the spotlight story. Um, he had written a piece in the Columbia Graduate School of Journalism. Sorry, he did a case study for the Columbia Graduate School of Journalism, which is not exactly a hotbed of Hollywood activity. Um, so we've got two young producers scrambling to keep their heads above water, um, now chasing a decidedly uncommercial project store, um, brought to us by a guy that absolutely no one has ever heard of. Right. Um, so undeterred, though, we then find our way to Boston, and we meet with the journalists. And, um, and they express that they can't believe anyone in their right minds uh, would ever possibly be interested in telling their story as a movie. They literally think we're nuts. Um, but they grant their blessings, and somehow, thankfully, we forget to defer. Um, and we ignore them, and we carry on. Um, we obtain their rights and we start shopping the story around um, to various writers, directors, producers, and agents. But the response is definitely um, not altogether encouraging. We have, the, you know, we get the, the book thrown us. You'll need to create a love story, a fictional storyline to pump up the thriller aspect. 
Ensembles are just too hard and you'll never, and you'll need to be combine characters. No one wants to see a story about kids getting hurt. Um, but we eventually pair up with Tom McCarthy, who has never directed a movie for a studio, um, and Josh Singer, who has spent most of his, TV, his career writing for TV. Um, the guys dive in behind the story and they spend countless weeks, months, um, you know, interviewing the reporters and the survivors and other influential characters to the story um, in this really labyrinthian tale. And we have literally a mountain of information at our disposal. And the big question becomes, what does it all mean? What is the story behind the story um, that we want to try and tell through all of this? And we really struggle to pull out what is the essence of our story. But eventually, that little word raises its head, deference. Deference by members of the clergy, deference by parishioners, deference by members of society at large, deference by the globe um, to one of its own institutional brethren, and deference by all to a legal system that had always done things in the way that they had. So let's take a look at this clip from the movie, which I think really sums all of this up. Did everyone read Eileen McNamara's column this weekend? That's the Gagan case? Yeah. What's the follow on that? It, it's a column. What kind of follow are you thinking? Uh, well, apparently this priest molested kids in six different parishes over the last 30 years, and the attorney for the victims, Mr. Uh... Garabedian. Thanks, Eileen. Mr. Garabedian says Cardinal Law found out about it 15 years ago and did nothing. Yeah, I think that attorney's a bit of a crank, and the church dismissed the claim. He said, she said. Whether Mr. Garabedian is a crank or not, he says he has documents that prove the Cardinal knew. Uh, as I understand it, those documents are under seal. Okay, but the fact remains a Boston priest abused 80 kids. We have a lawyer who says he can prove law knew about it, and we've written all of uh, two stories in the last six months. This strikes me as an essential story to a local paper. I think at the very least, uh, we have to go through those documents. How would you like to do that? Well, uh, I don't know what the laws are here, but in Florida, we would go to court. You want to sue the church? Technically, we wouldn't sue the church. We'd file a motion to lift the seal on those documents. The church will read that as us suing them. So will everybody else. Good to know. So that was all it took, literally. I mean, the first day in the job, and Miami transplant Marty Baron, um, later described in the film as an unmarried man of the Jewish faith who hates baseball, um, <laughs> comes in and asks a simple question that no one else had thought to ask because they just assumed that it was the way that it had to be because it was the way that it had always been. So coming back full circle, I found myself asking, how do we avoid the deference trap in our lives and others? And I went back to the word itself and uh, wondered what antonyms for it might look like, and I found the following that, when handled appropriately, resonate. Noncompliance, contrariness, rebelliousness, defiance. And as I looked at these words more carefully, I thought about our journey and thought about our journey with Spotlight um, and beyond. I realized that these are outsider words, words that could be used to describe any number of us involved in Spotlight, from the members of the real story to the members of our team who made the film possible. And so I would like to posit to all of us that we actually make an effort to be outsiders in our own lives from time to time. And whether it be in our work, or our personal lives, or as civic members, let's make a conscious effort to defy deference and make a real difference in our lives and those of others. Thank you.